What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Brace Explained. I hope you guys are all doing well. We talk a lot about the different things that we do in orthodontics, but I wanted to touch base on something that each and every one of you guys see at every single orthodontic appointment, and that is the instruments that your orthodontist uses. I've had patients in the chair ask what the purpose of one instrument is versus another, so in today's video, I want to review a basic setup that your orthodontist uses. Now, this isn't all the instruments that we use, these are just the most common ones that we use, but I thought it'd be useful to show you guys kind of up close and see what the purpose of each of these things are and why we use them in your mouth. If you guys enjoy the things that I review in today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, as well as let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more videos about the instruments that we use in the office and their purposes. If you guys haven't had a chance yet to download my free ebook, Life with Braces, I'm gonna put a link in this corner as well as in the description of today's video. It goes over some of the things that you could do during your orthodontic journey, to maintain better health, better hygiene, and make the process go by a little bit more painlessly and quickly. So if that's something you haven't checked out yet, I highly recommend it. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So this is what an orthodontic cassette is, and this is what we can use to store some of our instruments so that they don't bang up against one another once they're in the autoclave. You might notice that your orthodontist uses a cassette like what I'm showing in today's video, or in just a simple baggie. This is just a preference of the orthodontist. If you put it into the cassettes, that costs a little bit more, but it makes the instruments last longer. So it's really just a trade-off whether you want to buy more instruments or invest a little bit more and buy a cassette that protects the instruments during this autoclaving process. And these are autoclave bags, and these are the baggies that we use to keep the instruments when we put them into the machine that makes them sterilized. We can check that the bags have been sterilized and the things that have been sterilized in them if you look in the corners where we have indicators to see whether they've been sterilized. And I don't know if you can really tell here, but this little indicator here starts off as blue and when if it's sterilized, it actually becomes gray. So it's gray meaning that the contents inside this bag are sterile. These instruments are autoclaved after every single appointment with the patient. And what autoclave means is that they undergo very, very high heat to kill off any microbiomes that are on them. This means things like viruses and bacteria, all those things are killed off. Before we put it into the autoclave machine though, what we do is we usually put them in a thing called an ultrasonic. And what an ultrasonic is, is it has a material that will kill some of these bacteria, but it vibrates it. So all the blood or any gunk that's on these metal instruments, they break off. And after we do that, we put them in these bags and put them into the autoclave, which goes to really, really high heat and kills off any bacteria. Unfortunately, the cassette that I'm gonna show you guys today isn't in a baggie because I use it for the demonstrations here, so it's not sterile. But during a normal appointment, these are opened up chairside with you to make sure that they're kept as clean as possible right up until you're about to use them. So let's go, first go ahead and look and see what's inside of a basic cassette and what the purpose of these instruments are. First, we have to release these little tabs on the side which lock the cassette closed in the autoclave. So the way these basic cassettes are laid out is we have a mirror and a picker which has two sides and different purposes. And what we also have is what's called a distal end cutter, a wine guard, a math out, and a pin cutter. And I'll go over all of these in just a second. So first of all is a dental mouth mirror. So a lot of you guys are familiar with this one. It does exactly what you would think, it's a mirror. Um, I like that it has a little bend to it because then I could retract the cheeks a bit. And these are made by Hugh Freedy and it's pretty neat because on the back side there's another mirror. So the idea is that you can you know, stretch the cheek and then look in the back mirror. But to be completely honest with you guys, I never use that side. Next, let's take a look at the picker. So the picker has two sides. One side is the picking side, which is used to you know, take the color rings off of your teeth, and the other side is the pusher. The picking side is what your orthodontist uses to you know, pull the color ties off of your teeth and replace them at each appointment. This frees up the wire from your teeth and allows your orthodontist to either change the wire or change the color ties. The pusher side of the picking instrument is used to tuck in ligature ties if your orthodontist elects to tie in your teeth using this instead of a color tie. So if a steel tie is used, it's tied in with an instrument called a math out that we'll go over in a second, and the extra part is cut off using a pin cutter, but it's still sticking out and it'll really bug your cheeks. So what this pushing side of the instrument does is your orthodontist can use this to basically tuck in that extra part of the wire so that it doesn't bother your lips or cheek. A lot of you guys are familiar with this instrument and it's always called like the one that makes the clicky clicky noise. It's called a math out, okay, or a hemo. So this is one of the more fun instruments. It makes that clicky noise and this is called the math out. What it does is it has a locking apparatus that when we squeeze it, it holds it shut, and when we squeeze a little more, it releases it. And this is what's used to put on you know, power chain, steel ties, um, O-rings, color ties. So all those things use this instrument. So like, let's say we want to put on a red color tie, right? We'll pinch it from the corner and tear it off of the strip of O-rings, 
And this instrument will hold onto it. I don't have to hold it. I can rest it down and it'll keep holding it shut. And then what we'll do is we'll tie it onto a tooth. And then you squeeze it again to let go of it. And that's how a mathow is used. So next let's look at a distal end cutter. Distal end cutters are pretty awesome instruments. What they're used for is to cut wires to the right lengths. So your orthodontist might cut it before they put it in your mouth and then maybe do it again if it's a little bit too long in the mouth. But they're really neat because what they have is they have a part of it, the plier that holds the wire. So when you clip it, it doesn't go shooting. It holds onto it while it's cutting. So for instance, if we were to cut this wire right here, right? What you would do is basically hold it and squeeze and this part of the instrument holds the wire so it doesn't go and shoot down your like you know your throat or anything like that or fly across the office. They're really, really neat in the fact that they hold and they cut at the same time. These next two might not be used in every single cassette, but I like having them available for each patient. So first let's look at a pin cutter. The pin cutter's primary purpose is to cut very, very thin wires, but some orthodontists actually use doled out pin cutters to remove braces. So a lot of the times you'll see your braces being removed with an instrument like this, which can be used to hold onto the bracket and basically gently detach it from each tooth, which is the process that we use to take the braces off. The main purpose of this instrument though is used to clip ligature wires like these. So let's say instead of using a color tie, your orthodontist uses a steel tie. He or she will then use a pin cutter to clip the excess of this wire. And like we said in a previous part of this video, use a pusher to tuck that in. And last but not least, our trusty dusty Weingart plier. A Weingart is basically a utility plier. This thing is used for a bunch of different purposes. And what it, the main purpose of this is when we're putting in the arch wire, sometimes we, if it's a bigger wire, we can't just use our fingers to slide it in. We can use something like this Weingart to slide the wire into the braces and put it into the right position. These are basically used as your versatile pliers. For things that your orthodontist can't really just grab onto in your mouth, they'll use something like a wine guard. And these things are really nifty. I really like this design. This is from Rocky Mountain Orthodontics and I really love this plier. Most of the pliers that I'm showing in this video are either from Rocky Mountain Orthodontics or Hugh Freedy Orthodontics. Those are my two go-to brands. Um, they didn't sponsor this video or anything like that, but I really do love their instruments. I'm curious, which one of the instruments that I showed you today is your favorite? Let me know in the comments of today's video. If you want to learn a little bit more about these different instruments, let me know and I can make a second video or third video going into more specific instruments that you might see that your orthodontist uses. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up so you can stay up to date with more content like this. That's all I have for you guys today. For now, Dr. Greg, out.